Hello, Jeff Zwerink again with Give and Take, the segment of our show where we look at scientific discoveries and just ask the question, what does that tell us about the Christian faith and how can we be more confident in its truth? Today, I'm joined again by my colleague and boss, Hugh Ross, and we're going to discuss what are the implications of finding water on the planet Mars? Hugh, it's good to have you here again today. Thanks. So this is, uh, again, one of those topics that uh, People looking for life on Mars, I think that's gone on for decades. I know back in the 1800s, they were finding canals, and that's a sign of life. And even in the 1990s, we found uh, meteorites that said that they had life in it, and all of that has kind of fallen by the wayside. But there's this exciting discovery of a what looks like a lake in the south pole of Mars. So let's kind of flesh that out. What's the discovery, and what let's, let's kind of look at what the implications well, are. What's how it was announced in the popular internet articles that they found this giant lake lake on Mars, right. 20 kilometers across, but uh, and people thought, well, maybe there's something we can water ski on, mm -hmm. uh, but when you read the peer-reviewed paper that was published, uh, they didn't use the word lake. They basically said, uh, we found this highly reflective spot at the south pole of Mars. And well, well, that sounds very, and I, I bring that, I, I just kind of want to highlight a point, is that um, very often we get the popular press description of it that seems somewhat sensational or dramatic or, oh, wow, this is great, uh, groundbreaking. And then you look at the data and the scientists tend to be a lot more reserved or conservative in what they're saying. Well, my advice is when you see a popular article like that, only read the ones that give you a link to the paper. Mm -hmm. So you can go there and make sure that they've done an honest job on it. But what they really found uh, was a subterranean high reflective layer uh, below the south pole of Mars. And uh, they said, we think it's liquid water. Mm -hmm. They weren't positive. They said, we got good evidence as liquid water. They were able to measure the dielectric constant. Mm -hmm. That was consistent with being liquid water. The reflectivity was consistent, but they were very clear. This is not definitive proof of a liquid water. Moreover, they weren't able to measure the depth. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think this is a deep lake. Well, it could be just maybe a couple of millimeters thick of water, thick enough to reflect. Right. Okay, so this is radar imaging of the planet and in right. one particular region, uh, given the resolution, they look down and they see a reflective surface that's consistent with some sort of a layer of water, if you will. Um, how, what are the kind of the details? How deep was it underground? What was the extent of the region? It's more than a kilometer below the surface. Okay. And they were able to calculate, because you know, was, there was a lot of ice from the polar cap mm -hmm. weighing down on this. And they were able to calculate how warm the water could be. Okay. The warmest it could possibly be is 90 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Okay, and so that that's kind pretty of, chilly, obviously. That's pretty chilly. And we know water freezes at 32 degrees above. Right. And so this is 90 degrees below. How does it stay liquid? And that was most of what the paper was all about. Mm -hmm. How do you have water liquid at that extremely cold temperature? And basically they concluded there's only one way to keep water liquid at that very low temperature, and that is if the water is saturated with perchlorate salts. Okay, so, so the, the idea there, you know, it's the same thing when you go out uh, boiling water at high elevations. You put salt in and it makes it boil at a high temperature. Same thing, you put water or salt in water and it makes it freeze at a lower temperature, correct? Well, so the same principle? Like the antifreeze you put in your car if right. you live in a cold place. Okay. Uh, you, you alter uh, the chemicals of the antifreeze and it can stay liquid at a lower temperature. Okay, so this, this is, is the extreme low. You right. can't, as so, matter, matter of fact, what they're able to show is that no matter how concentrated the perchlorate salts, mm -hmm. if it gets colder than minus 95, it will not be liquid. So this is right at the edge, which again caused them some doubt. Maybe we didn't really see liquid water because we're so close to the edge where it could be liquid. And they basically made the point too, if you think this is an environment for life, uh, you're kidding yourselves. Mm -hmm. The concentration of salt is so great, uh, no conceivable life form can exist in this uh, liquid water. Plus the fact we're talking, it's really cold. Well, okay, so let's kind of explore the implications. We've got, let's just take it at face value. Say they've discovered some sort of water uh, reservoir underneath the surface. It's at high pressures, obviously, because it's sitting under a bunch of rock. It's pretty cold because of the temperatures. It's got a lot of salt in it. 
Um, probably has some mixture of dirt in there. It's probably not, you know, kind of the pristine lake water that, like, that we're well, looking at. Well, they said in the paper, maybe it's not a layer of liquid water. Maybe it's sludge. Right, okay. So, so But let's just take that. So what does that mean for our understanding of life in the universe? I mean, you know, uh, you got to have water for life. Uh, if we find this water, is there a reasonable shot of life being there? Well, the, the conclusion of the paper is not only do you need liquid water for life, it's got to be the right kind of liquid water, and the liquid water they found is not the right kind. But there is, they had an optimistic note saying, hey, given that we found uh, this uh, layer of uh, conceivably liquid water, maybe we're going to find something somewhere else. D so, did they give any estimate of how much, how many of these might exist on Mars? Well, so far, this is the only place that the they've found it. Found. Okay. And it said it may be one big layer or it might be a bunch of small layers that are separated. So it could be a bunch of small brine ponds mm -hmm. or it could be a sludge. And basically ended the paper saying we need to do more research because mm -hmm. we, we only have a vague understanding of what's going on here. Uh, let's drill down some more. But they were very cautious in saying... Let's not jump to the gun and think we've found a possible site for life. This is right. definitely not a possible site for life. Well, I know you've described a lot of that in your blog article, uh, you know, about finding water on Mars and is this is a shocker. And I know I've written another article. And one of the things that stood out to me about this that I'd like to get your comments on is that, you know, we're looking at Mars and we're very excited about a little bit of water that's about as cold as you can get it and still be water. It's got heavily salt content under a lot of pressure buried under a bunch of rock. And we're excited about that. You know, but you contrast that with Earth, and Earth is just swimming, if you'll forgive the pun, in water. I mean, there's water everywhere on Earth, and life just abounds on Earth. It's, it, it strikes me as telling that the best conditions we can find on Mars are in this relatively hostile environment, yet you compare that with Earth, and it's just teeming with life. Well, we that got, says something to we me. We got water in all the right forms. I mean, notice we got frozen water, liquid water, and mm -hmm. water vapor all in the right amounts and proportions. We got the right kinds of liquid water and we don't have too much or too little. I think that's one of the things that astronomers are beginning to recognize. It's the quantity and kind of liquid water that's crucial for life. So it's more than just finding water. There are other conditions. There are other conditions. With and it. Earth is actually quite water poor compared to what we would expect from comparable rocky planets. I mean, I've written to the point that we got about 500 times less water than what you'd expect in other Earth-like uh, planets. Mm -hmm. And so too much water can be a problem. Uh, just like for the rhyme of the ancient mariner, if you're out in the middle of the ocean with all that water out there, and if it's salty, that water isn't gonna help you. So Hugh, how do we use this discovery to share our faith? Basically point out just how wonderfully designed Earth is, that we not only have liquid water, we got it in the right form and the right quantity, and really nowhere else do we see anything like Earth that has water exactly the way we need it for life to be possible. Thanks, Hugh. You know, it really is remarkable. When we look at Earth, it is just incredibly well designed for life. And even little bits of water found outside of the Earth just showcase how well it's designed. I would encourage you to go check out Hugh's blog. Go to reasons.org and search Today's New Reasons to Believe to get more information on how you can use this fascinating discovery to share your faith with others.